In Scotland, there exists a title that is given to any man who owns a vast estate or lands within the country. This title is that of Laird. The title has no formal status in law or court, but the Lairds were wealthy landowners and often employed many of the surrounding locals. There was a time in Scottish history when the local Lairds garnered great respect and were treated as a class above the ordinary gentleman. Today's tale tells of just such a man and the strange abduction of his beloved, the Laird of Balmache's wife. The Laird of Balmache was a young and gallant man who took his title with much pride and dignity. Unfortunately for this specific Laird, his beloved wife had recently become gravely ill. So ill was she that for the last week the poor woman had been confined to her bed and had not the strength to leave it. The Laird feared greatly for his wife and became determined to help the woman. On one day it was brought to the Laird's attention that in the city of Dundee there lived a wise woman with much knowledge on the subject of medicines. Quickly the man called upon the stable hand to ready his horse as he himself prepared for the journey. So it was that early in the day the laird set off for the city, clad in a fine travelling cloak with his trusty sword and dirk sheathed by his side. In Dundee he found the wise woman and told of his wife's ills. With some haste the woman concocted a tonic which he handed to the young laird. The tonic would quell the fever and return the wife's strength the troubled husband gave much thanks to the woman and returned to his horse. By twilight, the laird had reached the Car Hills near Carlongi and had not much further to go until he would reach the boundary of his own estate. It was then that he spotted an odd procession at the foot of the hill. As the laird drew closer, he saw that a troop of elegant and ethereal beings were marching upon the road. Between them they carried a litter, and upon its bed was the bound form of a woman draped in a silver cloth. Almost instinctively, the man knew what he looked upon. It was those that dwell within the hills, the fair folk or she, and it would seem to him that they had abducted a young woman. The taking of a woman by the she was a well-known practice. It was thought that the fae would abduct young women and force them to work in the other world. The laird would not stand for this, especially in his own land. Being a man of great courage, he rode his horse to block the procession, drew his sword, and in a firm tone called, In the name of God, release your captive. To the laird's shock, the beings disappeared in an instant, and the litter simply fell to the ground. The man rushed to its side and tore off the silver cloth. Laying beneath was the figure of a young woman, sound asleep, dressed in only her bedclothes. For a moment, the laird could not believe his eyes. The woman, laying in front of him, was his wife. Lifting her from the litter, the man wrapped his wife within the travelling cloak and placed her upon the horse. The pair only had a short distance to ride before they arrived home safely. The laird called for a maid to attend his wife and gave her the medicinal tonic. The man then immediately ran to his wife's bedchamber, where to all appearances the woman still lay, sick of the fever. As the man came closer, the woman in the bed spoke to him, and told of how ill she was, and how she had been neglected in his absence. The man feigned great concern for the being in the guise of his wife, and pretended much sympathies upon her. He told her that she must keep warm, as it is the only way to clear the fever. The laird built a large fire in the bedchamber to warm the room and bade that his wife leave the bed and come closer to the flame. But alas, the woman claimed she had not the strength to move. Ever willing to help, the laird lifted the impostor from the bed and bore her across the room to the great fire. 
It was then he gave a wry smile and threw the being into the flames. A great scream echoed throughout the estate as the woman within the burning embers changed form. Becoming a wild spirit, she blasted her way through the bedchamber roof and disappeared into the night. On the next morning, the laird's wife had recovered, not just from her illness, but also from the shock of her harrowing trip with the she. The wife then told what had happened. On the very day that the laird had left, around sunset, her attending nurse left her side to fetch a candle. It was then that the window blew open and a mass of strange creatures filled the room. They lifted the woman from her bed and carried her out of the window. As she began to scream and yell, the she cast over her a sparkling silver cloth, after which she recalls nothing until she saw her husband standing over her on the car hills. The hole in the ceiling where the enraged fae made her exit was mended, but it is said that it would never be fully repaired. Each year since, on the anniversary of the wife's abduction, a great storm rises and in the tempest the hole in the ceiling is once again uncovered. Perhaps this odd phenomenon is the return of the she looking for new prey. Thank you for listening and a special thank you to all those who support me through Patreon. Slang Java 